Along with the third generation Moto G, Motorola announced a couple of budget price headphones during its announcement last week. The Moto Surround and the Moto Pulse. Now the latter is what we're going to be talking about in detail in this review. Boasting an easy to buy price of $60, the Moto Pulse is pretty light in the pockets, but let's just hope it's not light in everything else. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here, and you're watching our video review of the Moto Pulse. Frankly, it's bland and cheap looking, which is further made profound, picking them up in our hands for the very first time. Sure, it's lightweight and offers a tight fit when it's worn, so it stays firmly in place with vigorous activity, but there's just that cheap attachment due to its flimsy construction. The board design is forgettable, but it doesn't help either that there's a minimal amount of padding throughout it. It's barely there around the head strap, while the ear cups are treated to just a marginal amount. And really annoys us how we're never satisfied by how they sit over our ear. You think that the rotating and adjustable height of the ear cups would help, but that's totally the case as there's no solid locking mechanism to prevent the ear cups from moving on their own. All the headphones' buttons and ports are situated along the right ear cup, so they include the dedicated power button, the volume controls, multi-function button, LED status light, and a micro USB port. We sometimes find ourselves having difficulty in finagling with the volume controls because they're just not raised enough. We have to give credit to Motorola for having the expertise when it comes to range, seeing that the Moto Pulse offers extended connectivity range over other comparable models. In our real world testing, we're content with the 30 feet range it's able to achieve indoors, where it's more complicated with retaining its penetrating power through walls. It could have been worse, but the Moto Pulse's performance with music listening is tolerable enough for us to accept for most occasions. There's a strong presence with lower audio ranges, so there's always that pleasant level of bass accompanying its quality. Luckily, it's never too overpowering, but it's rather light with the treble. At the highest volume setting, the Moto Pulse somehow is able to minimize any straining qualities that would otherwise prove irritating to the ear. Likewise, there's some challenges to overcome with its call quality performance, but it still largely remains to be usable for the occasion, thanks in part to its strong volume output. Voices through the Moto Pulse have a very robotic tone to them, while on the other end of the line, there's some light muffled tones as well to deal with. It's not perfect, that's for sure, but it's not a total wash either. Using the Moto Pulse through our workout routines each day, we're able to get out a little bit over 14 hours of juice from a full charge. While it doesn't necessarily hit that full 18 hours it's rated for, we're nonetheless still content by its reach, which is good considering its price point. We have an affordably priced pair of headphones here, there's just no denying that when we look at its $60 cost. Its design reflects that very much, seeing that it's bland, boring, and downright generic as it can get. What we're dealing here, folks, is just a cheaply constructed thing, and it doesn't help when its fit just never feels proper over our ears. However, even with its ergonomic challenges and its tasteless aesthetics, the Moto Pulse manages to offer an okay audio experience that's decent enough to use for music listening and even phone calls. If it weren't for its passable audio performance and good battery life, it'd be a tough to recommend this one over other offerings. Its low cost makes an attractive option for those on a slim budget, but those with higher budgets will want to steer clear away from this one.